Thank you. Fellow conservatives, fellow Republicans, you give me a great honor to share this podium with other distinguished conservatives, listening to Sylvia reminisce about our days with people for the West, seeing Terry front and center, and I remember fighting those those cases on the Ag Bill, where the uh, the Washington think tanks try and be real cheeky. They would call us socialist cowboys, not understanding that we didn't have the rights to purchase private property in places like the Ag Bill. I'll never forget closing out the argument for for a lease on my house for the cattle in Arizona. And one member of Congress from Georgia, and another member of Congress from Louisiana said, J.D., can you explain that to us? We didn't understand. We're happy to vote with you because we understand that history has made this different for Arizona. Forgive me if my voice is, is reduced to a whisper. This has been a, quite an active campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you understand that. Mostly active on the other side. 16 million dollars spent against little old me to tell you what a bad guy I am for being a conservative and to allow someone else to impersonate a conservative. I look around this room so many times and it's great to see you and you move kind of south. Man, Adams, you were an activist back before conservative activism was cool. And he come up on his own dime with a list of things to go through in Washington, D.C. So many of you shared that passion. Miss Mary sends her regards and regrets. Uh, a lot of years have passed. Uh, the little guy who was in my arms that historic day in 1995, when I was sworn in as part of the first Republican majority in 40 years, that little guy, John Mike Hayward, he's 16 and he's driving. And Mary takes a decidedly Reagan-esque approach to child rearing. She says, honey, I'd love to come with you, but I gotta trust but verify with the kids. So she's not here today. A couple of thoughts. This is really about we and not me, but this personal glimpse of you'll allow me. If you ever want to attract attention internationally, just challenge the presidential nominee of your party two years after he has been the standard bearer. We were down in the tiny town of Tonopah. I love that alliterative phrase. The tiny town of Tonopah for a town hall one Saturday afternoon. Over 200 people showed up and also in attendance was a video crew from a television network bearing the initials NHK. N as in Nippon. In Japan. Wow. Uh, and others have been in the path to the door. Ms. Mary and I were over visiting with the Palo Verde Republican women. And uh, a correspondent was there from the Daily Telegraph in the UK. And you know our British cousins can be somewhat irreverent. They not. They described the speaker thusly, and I quote They wrote, Hayward, the candidate of broad shoulders, excellent vocal projection, and Trump-like hair. <laughs> now, 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 I would point out to you there is no Velcro attached here. The moment as the coif here done up in turban-esque fashion. This is my hair. Besides, if they checked the bank accounts, they would see it be a few million dollars per round of what the nominal has. Right, we're going to crack the shower here. They came up the hill from Fountain Hills. He said, take the kids fishing out on the boat. And uh, again, so many of you, and I, forgive me if my time doesn't permit personal reminiscences with, with all of you. Uh, some of you have asked. Many times, it came up prior to the $16 million of negative television ads. But they asked, why run? And there's a simple answer. Because you asked me to. You wanted to have an honest and goodness conservative serving, a conservative with a proven track record. We may not agree on every jot and tittle of policy that comes down the pipe. I've got a proven record. The American Conservative Union gave me a lifetime rating of 98%. I have a higher rating from Citizens Against Government Waste than does Mr. McCain who claims that he is an opponent of earmarks, and we'll talk about that in a second. Briefly, my agenda 
is quite simply this. I spoke of the international journalists. They get it, as opposed to those who come out of newsrooms in New York City or Washington, D.C., and certainly not the newsroom of the Arizona Republic. You and I understand what's at stake here. First, last, and always, it is this document, the Constitution of the United States. Will we remain a constitutional republic? Benjamin Franklin was asked in that fateful year of 1887, the patriarch of Philadelphia High Society quite appropriately had her granddaughter in tow when she encountered Dr. Franklin, shouted to him, Dr. Franklin, what kind of government have you given us? He responded, a republic if you can keep it. That admonition rings in our ears two centuries and two decades later. So accordingly, my agenda to restore the Constitutional Republic is really wrapped up in three bills I will introduce on my first day as your next United States Senator. Article 1, Section 1 of our Constitution is quite simply to the point. All legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in the Congress of the United States. And yet in the 20th century, the legislative branch ceded its constitutional authority to the executive branch, not only to cabinet-level agencies, but to a veritable alphabet soup of acronyms. <laughs> FCC, FEC, OSHA, EPA, and woe to the citizen on the wrong side of those regulatory bodies. Let's be talking about it in a second, though. The Congressional Responsibility Act seeks to restore the primacy of Article I, Section 1 by simply requiring this. Those regulatory bureaucrats will continue to dream up regulations, but the great clarifying constitutional role would be this. Every proposed regulation sent back to the House and the Senate for an up or down vote. That way you can hold constitutional officers accountable. And believe me, the lives of the left don't have it. Constitutional subcommittee, House Committee on the Judiciary, do you have some C-SPAN watchers here? It, it is a great cure for insomnia. I want to put this diplomatically. A guy who is somewhat diminutive yet robust, Jerry Nadler, the avowed leftist of New York. Jerry was apoplectic. He says, J.D., if we have to do that, we won't have much time to do anything else. I asked Jerry, that's a bad thing. <laughs> Second idea, to restore our constitutional republic. A tip of the cap rhetorically to my retiring former colleague, John Shaggy of the 3rd District. He introduced this and called it the Enumerated Powers Act. I think there's a far more accurate name for it, and taking the pride of authorship when I introduce it to the Senate next year, we will call it the Constitutional Citation Act. Simply stated, it will be this. For every bill introduced in the House and the Senate, the sponsors of that legislation must cite the specific area of the Constitution that gives the legislative branch the right to act in the first place. <laughs> and the third bill I will introduce is something I introduced a half decade ago in the House, and the contrast could not be greater. Because five years ago when I was introducing this legislation, my opponent was teaming with Ted Kennedy to introduce his amnesty bill. Oh, sure, he gave it a different name, Comprehensive Immigration Reform. But you know and I know it was amnesty. Meantime, there I was in the House introducing the Enforcement First Act. In many ways, SB 1070 mirrors what I was attempting to do at the federal level, and as the name suggests, it was to enforce existing immigration law, but to do more, to return to the original intent of the 14th Amendment, to end the mistaken notion set up by judicial activism of birthright citizenship or the worst phenomenon in this jet age of birth tourism, where people around the globe are gaming our system to take advantage of our tax dollars. Also, to put in place the needed infrastructure on our border and to supplement the hardworking men and women of the Border Patrol, the introduction of our standing military on our borders to deal with that problem. You see, the real difficulty, whether it's Barack Obama or Janet Napolitano or John McCain is this. They all view the challenge we confront as a political problem to be managed instead of seeing it as you and I see it, 
a national security threat, an economic security threat, and an invasion that must be stopped. And it is worse. Our friends at the Heritage Foundation, Dr. Robert Rector, ran the numbers to accommodate Mr. McCain's ill-advised amnesty plan. It would cost you and me and every other American taxpayer just for retirement benefits for illegals granted citizenship. For Medicare and Social Security, it would cost you and me $2.6 trillion. That's wrong-headed. That's ill-advised. That would lead, I believe, to our financial extinction. And that's why you need a new United States Senator. There are other, there are other items. The bailouts. Mr. McCain suspended his presidential campaign to rush back to Washington, yet Hank Paulson, the Treasury Secretary in those days, says one man is responsible for influencing the votes for that ill-fated bailout. John McCain. 